This is the inside of a self-exciting Delco alternator. I've made it so it self-excites. I put magnets in the rotor. The brushes are hooked directly to these purple wires. You'll see this is a single phase machine. This is one of the center tops. There's 14 coils in all, so this is 7 coils and this is 7 coils. You can see me in a different video self exciting this alternator, the drill. This is what it looks like inside. I won't be pulling this stator right out because these wires are siliconed in here we'll be using this one on a gas engine in the future change your bearing you just have those three bolts it's easy to change this is how I wire these alternators the outside coils That's how you make a single phase machine out of a three phase. The inside here is just these high high voltage wires. These two. I can't remember how many turns there is, probably around 40 turns, I think. Each maybe half a millimeter diameter wire and this is the rotor this is all you need to change inside of a inside of a Delco alternator make it self excite right here you can fit small magnets in there I might have one around here somewhere same ones I used. Yeah, here's an old one. If I have a dime in here. Here's a dime. Canadian dime. Here's the magnet. You can see how big it is. I don't have a caliper on hand. But yeah, there's that's all there is, is just one that's tucked underneath there, just like that. Inside there. To do it right, when you're putting them in the rotor, make sure you mark which brush in there is positive and which one is negative and which part they go on to here and then energize the rotor and put your magnet over top of it so you know you're putting the magnet in the same way as what it's trying to produce its field that's how you do it and then just silicone, I mean uh, fiberglass resin it together and paint it if you can because they're not really weatherproof these things paint helps just don't put it on too thick I've had this rotor spinning at over 7,000 RPM, so it works. It's balanced too. Once they were resined in here, I took Dremel tool and made some airflow channels. Seems to work all right. That's all there is to it. That's all you need to do. If you want to watch, I'll put it back together for people who don't know how to put brushes in. Might be handy.
lost the spring, of course, right here. Make sure you don't lose your springs when you're doing this. Bring in. It's easy to figure out how to put your wires directly to your brushes too. A little common sense and you'll have it no problem. This is the hardest part, is putting the brushes back with my big clumsy fingers in me. So now I have that brush pushed in, there's a hole here, goes straight into your brush holder, put a nice stiff wire in there, push it up to the next brush. Put your spring in. The brush down. And push it all the way into the next hole. You can see the hole where your wire has to go into. So there now the wire is holding them down. It's hard to see in there. But Put it in. Make sure your bolt holes here are lined up. There's no metal in here. This alternator is made out of about four other ones. This one bolt that was wrecked, so I used a different one from a different type of alternator that had a screw. Phillips head, I mean. When you put it back together, you have to make sure everything is tight and lined properly, otherwise your alternator will cog. tighten those up so you can hear it cogging it's making noise it's not supposed to do that it's not not together properly yet you do rest by hand It's back together. Now you just pull your wire out when you're done. 
and it's finished. It's a zero cogging machine.